Anytime khums is paid, Allah increases people's rizq. Allah will give it back to you. And on the contrary, those who do not pay their khums, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the barakah away from them. Khums is to be paid 20%, to be paid on the excess amount of your income. So for example, first of all, you have to choose a date in the year. That will be your year-end date, any date. So for example, you say my day, your year-end date is first day of Shawwal, Eid al-Fitr. Okay. So from Eid al-Fitr to Eid al-Fitr, the next Eid al-Fitr comes. How much money have you earned? How much excess money have you got? You say, well, I earned maybe, for example, throughout the year, I earned, let's say, $100,000. But I had to pay my mortgage. I had to pay my car payments. I had to pay some food and whatever. We say, okay, no problem. After paying all this, how much money have you got left in the bank? Say, well, I got $10,000, for example, left in the bank. Say, okay, so now you need to take 20% of that $10,000. How much? 2000 Good. That's your khums. That has to be paid off. This is what we call haqqul imam. This is the imam's money. Some people, that doesn't suit them very well. Although this is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Anfal, wa'lamu, this is verse number 41. To the end of the ayah. That there is khums on whatever you earn. Now I remember one day, a businessman, a wealthy businessman was sitting with one of the ulama. He said, you know, this khums, this uh, whatever, this was only at the time of the prophet. Now it doesn't apply to us. He said, how did you come to this conclusion? He says, well, because the ayah says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ It uses the word غَنِيمَة, غَنِمْتُمْ. غَنِيمَة means war booty. Today we don't have war booty. No, we don't. We're not fighting wars and we collect the booty. Therefore, this doesn't apply to us. Interestingly, this alim was quite smart. He told him, you know, this ayah is in Surah Al-Anfal. Okay. 41. He said, if you go to the same surah, verse number 69. Same surah. Allah says, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا غَنِمْتُمْ حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا Eat from what? You have earned. Ghanimtum means earned here. Halalant. So this alim asked this man, what does Ghanimtum mean in the second ayah here? He said, means what you've earned. He said, so how come in the first ayah when it talks about khums, you interpret it as war booty. Here, you interpret it as what you've earned. So you like the Quran to be interpreted the way you like. Doesn't work that way, my brother. Ghanima means whatever you've earned. Yes, it also is used for war booty because they earn that in the battles. However, there is khums. Some people don't like that. No. Although, according to the ahadith and to the people, anytime khums is paid, Allah increases people's rizq. Allah will give it back to you. And on the contrary, those who do not pay their khums, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the barakah away from them. This story is narrated by one of the maraja'. May Allah bless his soul. A marja. He says, a person came to me. This person is a very wealthy man in one of the Muslim countries. In fact, he owned a bank in one of the Muslim countries. Very wealthy man. He went for Ziara, this wealthy man, bank owner. Went for Ziara and then went to visit this Marja. Through the conversation with this Marja, he told this Marja that I've never paid Khums in my life. Very wealthy, bank owner. This Marja told him, listen, How about we work on a plan for you to pay your khums? Because it's wajib. You have to pay it. This is Imam's money. He said, let me think about it. He went home. 
came back the next day he said to this magja he said you know I calculated approximately how much homes I would have to pay he said we're talking about millions of dollars here you know, this is not like a small amount so this magja said okay no problem is it too much for you at this time we can work on a payment payment you don't have to pay the whole amount now but at least start paying it now we can work with you this is Imam's money give it to the Imam help those people who are in need of help this person thought, sat down and thought he said you know I can't do this it's just too much I cannot this magja tried to convince him educate him just he wouldn't subhanallah although he prays he fasts he comes for ziyara but this part he could not apply that part he did not want subhanallah he left this magja's office he left went back to his home country the same person as he arrived in the airport he was arrested the government has seized his banks and they've taken everything away from him and he was put in the prison the news reached the magja that you know this person who came to see you a few days ago he went back home he was arrested this magja said subhanallah i gave him an opportunity but he refused to take it 